Hello, welcome to Biograd TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How the military entered the Equatorial Guinea politics. The West African country of Equatorial Guinea has had a bloody coup and three coup attempts. Equatorial Guinea gained independence in 1968 and the first president of the country was to be chosen. The two leading candidates for the presidency were Atanasio Ndogo Mione and Francisco Masia Nguema. The struggle ended with Francisco Masia Nguema becoming president. In the following year, Atanasio Ndogo Mione plotted a coup to overthrow Masia but was arrested. The attempted coup failed and Masia executed Atanasio Ndogo Mione. Following the coup attempt, Masia went on to silence all forms of opposition within the country. He used his authority as president to clamp down on his political opponents and members of minority ethnic groups. About 40,000 people were killed in Masia's reign in Equatorial Guinea. To prevent anyone from attempting another coup, Masia used prison camps to hold those who were not loyal to him and oversaw mass killings in the country. Barely a decade after the first coup attempt, 25% of the population had left the country to live in exile. The first successful coup took place on the 3rd of August 1979. Masia had secured his position as the totalitarian leader of Equatorial Guinea, silencing anyone standing against his rule. Before the coup against Francisco Masia Nguema, the dictator had ordered the execution of some of his family members. This order made it clear to even Masia's supporters that the president had become a danger to everyone in the country. On the 3rd of August 1979, Teodoro Obiang Nguema plotted and successfully carried out a coup which removed Masia from power. Obiang was the deputy defense minister of Equatorial Guinea and nephew of Masia. His brother was one of the victims of Masia's order that got rid of some of his family members. Obiang received support from some foreign embassies like the Embassy of Spain and the Embassy of the United States. Masia's Cuban palace guards also backed the coup and he fled with his personal bodyguard to his home in Nzeng Ayong village. The removed president stayed and got protection in a fortified bunker secured by some military officials loyal to him. Obiang continued the assault on the country's dictator and the conflict between the opposing forces got 400 people killed. Masia later destroyed his personal treasury by burning it before trying to leave the country through the Cameroon border. Naval commander Florencio Mai led a military company which cornered and captured Masia on the 18th of August 1979. The imprisonment of Francisco Masia Nguema and his supporters brought an end to his rule. The former dictator was executed on the 29th of September 1979 alongside six of his supporters. President Teodoro Obiang Nguema remained Equatorial Guinea's leader several years after the 1979 coup. So on the 7th of March 2004, members of the Zimbabwean police held a Boeing 727 N4610 which flew from South Africa to Harare in custody. The plane had three crew members and 64 ex-soldiers. An ex-Special Air Service officer, Simon Mann, was arrested with two others as they waited for arms to be carried into the plane near the runway. These men were labeled mercenaries who were based in South Africa. They were members of a special force unit under the South African apartheid regime known as the 32 Buffalo Battalion. They were accused of plotting a coup. Two days later, 14 other South African and Angolan men were suspected to be connected to the mercenaries arrested in Harare earlier. 
they were arrested in Equatorial Guinea on the 9th of March 2004. Hope Mutize, who was the marketing manager of Zimbabwe Defense Industries, said that Simon Mann and one of the men arrested in Equatorial Guinea paid $180,000 in February 2004. Simon Mann and Nick Dutua had requested to buy 75,000 rounds of ammunition, several AK-47 rifles, 150 hand grenades, 20 machine guns, and 10 grenade launchers. Mann had said that the rifles and ammunition would be used to guard diamond mines in some parts of the Democratic Republic of Congo in case of conflicts. What was described to have happened was that Simon Mann and the others arrested in Zimbabwe stopped to acquire some weapons in Arari City before going on to join the others in Equatorial Guinea. The whole affair was reported to be a plan to overthrow President Obiang. Nick Dutua later confessed that he was employed by Simon Mann to get more weapons and members to join. He was the leader of the 14 South African and Angolan men arrested in Equatorial Guinea. Their plan was to impose an opposition of Obiang, who was in exile. The government of Equatorial Guinea reported that there was a group of foreign mercenaries who had crossed the country's border on the 27th of December 2018. The group consisted of 40 armed mercenaries from Sudan, Central African Republic, and Chad. These armed fighters and some opposition of President Obiang's government were promptly arrested. Access to social media platforms was restricted and the action was later confirmed by the Defense Minister of Equatorial Guinea to be a coup attempt by radical opposition against the president. What have we missed out of this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.